We are very honored to have Kelly Hoppen MBE, a multi-award winning interior designer to be part of our Design Wire Master Talk today. And uh, she started her iconic career at 16 years old. And uh, she's trying to share her design issues to the masses through online class. And uh, now here, we are going to hear what she collected from her past 40 years experience. Kelly, you are known for your ever evolving style and a subtle fusion of East meets West. Could you elaborate how you integrate your style into Tianxi Palace for Capital Land? Well, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. Uh, thank you for listening to me again. Um, yes, I've, I've been in the business for nearly 44 years now, and I still wake up every day very passionate about design. But my, my real love of design really started with my passion for the East meets West, which is why I wrote the book. Um, and I love to integrate East and West together because I think it's really, uh, for me, the style that um, uh, resonates with me. So for the Beijing public uh, spaces, for me, it, it's about uh, creating something that's very international. For me, it's about creating something that is uh, very welcoming when you go into a building and it's very modern Beijing public areas, but at the same time, it has a wonderful feeling of uh, the experience of welcoming you and uh, a real layering of different textures. So, so here you can see that there is a, a real mix of, of woods which have been beautifully cut with a mixture of different marbles and inlays of metal. Um, and wonderful sort of plaster work on the walls. Uh, so quite minimalist, but beautiful lighting. And lighting for me is very important. So when I work with companies and public um, and property developers in China, it's very important for me to understand who their customer is and what it is that they want. And one of the things that I love to do is to work with people and companies and brands to help them build their presence within buildings and within interiors and architecture and that that is my absolute love so if we go through the images now you'll see this is the walkway through to the lifts good so this is now showing inside the lifts and if we go to the next slide so every single image is really important to me not only when you walk towards the lift, but when you're inside the lift. So the experience is really important. So if we go to the next image, we can now see uh, the lobby, I think. So this is the main reception area. So for me here, it was about being quite minimal, but using wonderful textures, but having this extraordinary lighting um, extravaganza, if you like, over this uh, beautiful um, reception desk. So when people are coming to visit their friends um, in the apartment block, it's a real experience. And if we then go to the next image, you'll see there's an area where people can wait and family members can be sitting and waiting for friends as well. So beautiful sofas. So even in public areas, what I try and do um, in commercial developments is try and make them feel quite residential, but incredibly grand because that's what you want. You've invested into a building. So obviously the, the public areas are as important as people's individual homes. So if we move now uh, to Taiwan, to another development which I have uh, designed, this was an extraordinary um, project that we did and, and worked on for many, many years with some wonderful clients. Um, so we did all the apartments. So this is one of the apartments. Um, again, choosing individual pieces, every accessory, every part, every light, every reflection for me is really important. So when we design, we don't only design and hand it over. It's got my name on it. So no matter where you stand, where you look, every single item has to be beautiful. Can we have the next slide, please? So here again is an, uh, one of the apartments in the areas. You can see every cushion has been made by hand. We have a hand embroidered blanket there. The coffee table was uh, um, made especially for here, so it wouldn't be seen anywhere else. Your views look very beautiful. 
again, very neutral colors. So easy for people to integrate their own life and, and experiences into the apartment. Here is one of the uh, dining areas, beautiful, unique lighting. But again, one of the things that um, makes this different from other designers is that we choose every accessory. We think of the life style, the way people want to live, to be a part of the brand, to be, um, so they don't have to think about anything. All they need to do is put pictures of their family in, their clothes, their shoes, their food in the kitchen, and they have a perfect home to live in. Here is a, a wonderful study where we've put in a wonderful red with beautiful handmade pieces, a beautiful desk which will look out um, again with really beautiful screens. For me, this project was one of my favorite projects to work on because it was very East meets West. Um, so I was able to use all the things that I love, like my signature screens and you know some of the wonderful dark woods mixed in with um, wonderful marbles. And here again, uh, one of the bedrooms. So again, sort of dividing the bedroom and living room where you sleep with a wonderful screen that you can actually see through, but again, a beautiful table with flowers. So every single detail is thought of um, as to, I try and imagine myself living in the space and what it is that I would want from years of experience of designing. So it, it's, you know, it's very well thought out. Thank you. So this is the living area to the master bedroom. Again, a beautiful chandelier, beautiful tables, accessories. And again, the layering of different textures, satins, velvets, all beautifully done, uh, but all sealed so that they can't get dirty and thinking about hygiene more so now than ever before. And here is another bedroom. So every bedroom will be different. Every fabric will be different. The texture will be different. Everything is handmade. So the quality of the actual craftsmanship is as important as the craftsmanship of the building. So when we work with property developers, we try and understand who their market is, who they want to be seen as, and we try and help them build their uh, platform, if you like, in terms of design, um, and taking uh, the exquisite um, workmanship to its highest level. Thank you. And so here you'll see, uh, we have the North and the South Tower. One was silver and one was gold. These were the extraordinary, um, incredible entrance areas to the North and South Tower which uh, was one of my most favorite projects um, because my design that I put forward, they absolutely, um, Diane Towers just opened arms and said, please do what you think is right. And uh, I'm incredibly proud of this because working with these very vast areas, you can make them feel very cold, but these, even with the high ceilings, feel very inclusive. Thank you, Phoebe. And here you'll see all the details with all the flowers. We would train the florists in any city that we would work in. So once we leave the building, the same thing is done. The beautiful Fortuny lanterns that we had made, especially from Venice, hanging there. So really international. Thank you. And again, here is one of the clubhouses that we did in one of the towers. So again, you're using the screens, so wonderful areas for people to work and feel very special in. Thank you. And again, some of the clubhouse here, um, you know, doing very monochrome, very beautiful spaces where meetings can happen. Thank you. And all the artwork that we choose, we choose individually, all the crystals on the chandeliers, the flowers we choose for the vases. And when we finish a project, we give a handbook of everything with photographs so that when it's cleaned and people put the flowers, they're always done in the correct place. Thank you. And again, this is one of the other towers where we're using the gold. So it's very important for us at Kelly Hoppen Interiors that once we hand over a project with this book that explains how everything should be done, it's as important for me personally and my team that even a year later, 
the building that we have created still looks the same as it did the day we left because it's our name attached to the company that we're working with. And it doesn't matter that it's a year old or two years old. It's still very important that the design aesthetic and everything about it is absolutely perfect. Thank you, Phoebe. And again, here you'll see all the beautiful uh, paneling on the walls, the beautiful screens. I mean, the sheer size of this was so extraordinary. And for me to actually see it in realization when it was finished, was just such a joy. And these beautiful uh, Tom Dixon lights floating in the center here, I absolutely love. Thank you. And again, using sculptures that we did here. Um, again, just doing something that's very different. So we feel that art is very important in buildings. And I think art is internationally um, seen as, as, as great luxury. So in these wonderful buildings that we create, we try and create some great art pieces, which I think is great for the property developers and brands that we work with, but also that we can help um, create these spaces so that they become internationally known as well. Thank you. And again, here you'll see there is a wall of mirrors that's very beautiful and these extraordinary lights that we had in these areas where you can sit and wait before you go up to the apartments. Thank you. And here is another lift lobby where you can see that every area that we've designed in both of these towers are very different. This is the silver one. So here we've used chainmail lights, beautiful benches where people can sit before they get onto the lifts. Thank you, Phoebe. Uh, again, one of the areas uh, in the clubhouse. Thank you. So this is actually uh, your introduction about your one part project in Taipei and the, uh, there are quite a few questions that we would like to raise for this project, such as uh, you have been said that every process needs to be designed. So how you actually apply it in, to one park, we can see that the public space in both towers, the VIP room and the show flat. Well, every project that I design is designed specifically for the client that I'm working for. So for me, it's very important at the beginning to understand what the brief is. Um, what I love uh, and the reason that I love doing uh, commercial buildings like this is that I have to create a make-believe client um, because we also do a lot of private uh, um, properties as well. And I think the excitement is trying to create the brand for a property developer uh, that they become well known for and that we've taken a part of that process. Um, so the process is, is the, the same with every client. We send a hundred page questionnaire. We understand what it is that they want. We try and map out how we're going to create what it is they need. And then we do concept boards and we discuss the, the feel and the look of what we want to try and achieve. I then go away and design it with my team and we then draw it up and we create these CGI visuals that are, that are almost like photographs so that a lot of our clients are able to pre-sell with our name and our brand before they even build. And I think in today's society and the world that we live in, people are buying into a brand and our brand is, is something that people aspire to. So we help create these brochures that, that uh, property developers can then sell before uh, the properties are built. We then do the show apartments so that people can actually go and touch and see and feel the um, actual product. And I think that's really important. You also mentioned about it, the project, it depends on that who you work with and to help the developer to establish the brand, to, to make them well known. And you mentioned about the artwork that actually could be a way that actually to make the brand well known by the people. So how do you well, think- Well, it's not just so much the art and a lot of people that we work for are very well known already. So it's more about always being cutting edge and being different. And I think we were one of the first people to say to some of our 
um, friends and clients that I feel that art is a, a lovely thing. And what we try and do is find local artists in every city so we can mix uh, international artists and local artists because I'm trying to kind of bring a, a fusion of global fusion together to try and support communities. Um, and in Taiwan, we used artists from Taiwan, for example, outside in the wonderful gardens. And so it's wonderful for me because I learn and meet wonderful local artists as well as being able to provide artists that I know internationally. So in a way, I'm learning something and I'm meeting people um, and learning new cultures. Um, uh, and so it, it's, it's fun for me, but I also think it's a wonderful way to integrate art and living together into buildings. I think it's, it's a, and it's a great showcase for young artists as well, which I think is really important. So do you think actually it's a way to bring uh added value to the property and for the people who live there or for the developer who trying to sell this to the market? Absolutely. I think, you know, there are two things when you have, if, if you're a property developer, one is you buy the land, two, you develop it, you, you create a, a friendship and a working relationship with a designer, you create something special, people buy into it. But that building has to have longevity that building has to stand the test of time, but also it needs to be a, um, a point of history. And, you know, the one thing and the reason I love to work in China is that the, these, these incredible visionaries, these property developers that are buying land and building these extraordinary buildings, um, they have such a vision. And, and for me, I love that. And I love the fact they trust me with their vision. And I think it's really important to put that stamp and that identity on every building and make it different. And therefore, these companies stand out as, as leaders in the market, in the world. And, and I'm very happy to be a part of that. As this is one of the projects that you like very most, and you also work with Gary to develop a practice to balance the modern daily life and to create a harmonious space. And this is project, one park is in Taiwan. So how had this pra been practicing in this project? Well, I've worked with Gary Hawkes for, for many, many years in all my projects in uh, the UK um, and abroad. I'm not a, an expert, Gary is, um, but he always says that I have a sense of what is right and wrong. I know that we had a, a Feng Shui uh, um, specialist come and um, uh, honor the land and I was there with the owners which was very special but then I use Gary to look at all of our drawings and to make sure that what I'm doing is correct. Um, for me balance energy is really important in a space. I feel it if it's not right. Um, so even whether a client asks for it or not I use it because it's, it's, I'm very spiritual in that way and so it's very important to me. And also for this one part project, oh, we've noticed that in both towers and show flat, so uh, we can see some kind of gold colors using one tower and silver and green and another tower, but in VIP room or the clubhouse is your iconic creamy and neutral color. So what's the thinking behind the integration? of color, material, and texture in this project? Well, it's, it's the same as every project, but, but our clients said, let's have a gold tower and a silver tower. And that was kind of created from day one. So that was, it kind of would just happened over a Starbucks coffee while we were outside talking. Um, and that's the great thing about me working with people in, in Asia is that we have such fun doing it. And I remember going to Taiwan and, and, and having that conversation. And every time I went, they always brought me the coffee I loved because they always remembered and it was lovely. So, um, uh, so we just decided we would have one gold and one silver. Um, in terms of color, obviously everyone knows that I love neutrals, I love taupe and beiges, but then I, you know, there are many projects um, and obviously we're only showing like six slides of maybe a thousand that I have because this, this property was very big. So we do add color as well, but it's very thought out. But for me, neutrals is good 
because, um, and it works because people can then add their color. So they, they buy into a neutral in interior and then they can, um, uh, you're, you're not telling them what to do. People can then move in and, and put their own identity into it. Yeah, this one pack project is quite a huge, including public space and the club room and the show flat. So what challenge or what breakthrough did you make through this project? Uh, no different to anything else. I, you know, I, I've built cruise ships and uh, people say, how did you do that? They're so big. And I say, well, I don't know. I just I don't think of it as big. I just think of it as a project. You start here and you finish here. So it's. Uh, for me, it's the same process uh, as any other project. I mean, if we move on to the next slides, I think you'll, you'll see um, there is a private residence. So if you look at this particular uh, slide here, this was a, a, a way smaller project. Um, and, you know, again, this is arriving into the, the, the um, apartment. We created a beautiful staircase. You have wonderful pieces of art. If you go to the next slide, please, Phoebe, you will see that, you know, we have a wonderful Tracy Emin piece of art up there and an interesting um, use of crittle glass doors because this is a much smaller apartment. Um, if you go to the next slide, you'll see the living room. So there's no difference to this private home other than there are items that belong to an individual but my same thought process is going to go into this as it is to a commercial project and that's the success that we have because we create something that's personal um so you know here you can see with the crittle doors and everything else this this was a a very normal uh boring apartment that was built uh, when I say boring, it was, um, you know, just four walls and a ceiling. We knocked the ceiling up. We made it double height. We put the glass uh, walkway there with the beautiful tang horse. We put the big crittle doors in. That's where the expertise of a designer comes in, to sort of look at a space that has nothing and create something that has everything. And this, for me, you know, the simplicity of bedrooms where people need to sleep and, and be calm um, to, you know, the excitement of a living space. So this one was in Beirut. So again, a uh, very similar type of buildings to the buildings that we do in, in China, for example. Uh, very big, tall buildings. So this was, you know, wonderful views over the sea. But again, very big open spaces. How do you make a massive space feel like home? Um, so we're very good at creating um, zoning in spaces. And for example, this kind of tall um, pillar here was hiding a structural pillar, but we've created that as a kind of bookcase that kind of breaks up the living room. If we go to the next slide, um, here you can see all the details and how big the space is, but by using neutral colors, woods and marbles and beautiful veneers and beautiful accessories. Uh, and this is a private home of somebody very well known, but it could be a, co a commercial building. Um, and that's what we pride ourselves in, is that we don't do anything any different. So for the commercial space or the private residence, actually the process are same to you, but would the design focus or the approach would be different? Well, the only difference is that you're dealing with somebody who has a personal taste. So a commercial building, you're, you're imagining who that person is. And for the private client, you're actually speaking to them. So they might guide you you know, like this is a Zaha Hadid piece, which is an incredibly expensive uh, sculptural piece that probably wouldn't go into a commercial building. So when you design your own home, we know that you design a bunch of uh, homes for celebrities, for politicians. So would be different when you design your home or design their homes? 
Well, only because they will tell me what they want. When I'm doing something for a commercial, I'm imagining what they want. But it's because of all my years of designing for private clients, I am really good at doing commercial work because I understand what people want. And I think, um, and that's why I love to design hotels as well. It's really, you know, anything where people can enjoy the space. I feel that um, I sort of create this make-believe. Um, and so I create something that really is alive rather than it just being a project. And I think that's what I love doing most. So here, you know, we can talk now about, um, this is a collection I'm literally just launching with Pavoni, which is a, a, a beautiful sustainable leather collection. And one of the things that you'll see in all my work is that texture is really, really important. And fabrics are really important and leather and metals. Um, if we go to the next slide, um, you should be able to see some uh, other images of the product. Um, and we've taken fabrics that I love very much and we've taken the textures and put them onto leathers and suede, which is quite groundbreaking. Um, and I'm very excited about this and I'm going to be using this on all of my projects. Uh, so they can be plaited, they can be used as curtains, they can be used um, on furniture, they can be wiped down, they can be really, really good. Um, sorry, go on. Yeah, we know that you're passionate about neutrals for the projects that you've shown, but uh, for leather, for the texture, how, what kind of feeling or experience can leather create for the space? Well, for me, leather and suede is, is a really important texture because it, um, it really, uh, it's like when you're cooking, when you put spices into something you cook, it's the spice that makes you go, ah, that's the taste I want. So for me, a leather or suede is a fabric that when you put it next to a normal texture, it just gives you that extra something. Um, and it's always been a great love of mine, leathers and suede. Um, and um, we will show lots more um, of the textures that we'll put on our Instagram and, and onto um, uh, Weibo and WeChat in China so that people can actually physically see. And we have many other wonderful collaborations that we're launching in Shanghai um, next month. We've got one with De Gournay, some beautiful um chinese um wallpapers that i've done so everything that i do is all about uh texture and layering of texture and that's what's really important for me and we see that you have your project spread all over the world so you have must have collected different memories and experience so you just shown as beirut according to what happened in Beirut recently, so what Beirut has been brought to you for the, this project. So you must have, have different memories and experience from your different cases. For the Beirut pro private home you just are showing, what has this brought to you? Well, actually the clients that live there, I texted them when, when we saw the horrendous news um, and they, they actually felt some of the, the shock of that. So, you know, m my memories is, I, I have so many wonderful memories of so many beautiful projects, but for me, it's the relationship that I hold close to my heart. Once we um, start a relationship with uh, people uh, doing up developments in, in Asia, we do more than one. We do many because um, once they can see that we understand their brand and we're very quick and we put a lot of uh, um, time and energy into making every single um, design work. And I think the important thing to remember is that because I've been working for so many years, it's really important for me that my name is on, on, the, um, on the project. It has to be perfect. And when I go back into these places, I immediately go around moving things, you know, to make sure. And everyone always laughs at me saying, why does it matter? And I say, because it's, we created this. It, it matters today as it did two, three, four, five, six, seven years ago. So I think 
when people invest in us, they invest in a lifetime of care. Um, and uh, everyone always says I'm a complete control freak because I want everything perfect, but it's, it's important to me. So you kept mentioning about uh, texture and the importance of texture. So how would you use that to reflect the character or the symbol of different cities? Well, you don't. It's, um, I think it depends on the light. You know, uh, I know that when I designed first class British Airways, we had to take fabric up 36,000 miles into the sky to see what color it looked like because actually the color in different countries can change a fabric. So we take that very seriously, but texture is really important. Um, you know, and I think that, um, again, it's every project is different and, and every project needs something different. And, um, and lighting is very important. So we, we look at every aspect of texture, whether it's lighting to stone, to leather, to suede, to linen, to silk, uh, to art, um, everything is important. We now get some questions from our audience. One of them asks that everything could be your inspiration. So where do you really get it from? Uh, everything. I get it from music mainly. I design to music. So music is my biggest uh, inspiration, but also people and travel and uh, flowers and clothes and shopping and everything feeds me. And I think it's really important um, when I teach young designers, I say to them, be open to everything because your inspiration comes from everything. If you are not alert you won't feel inspired uh, for me right now it's i think music is my biggest inspiration so would you actually to give our designers a suggestion on music or musician that you recommend no because it's all it's what you love you know the music i love is going to be different to what you love if somebody puts music on that i don't love i can't design so it's it's a very personal thing you have to decide what music you love so what about uh, uh, your favorite place to travel since everyone is kind of stay at home nowadays but maybe they can picture it for one day they can travel to some places uh, yeah, I mean, at the moment we can't travel and it's very sad. So luckily we have um, a lot of um, wonderful videos. We have wonderful things that we can watch. We have the internet that people can see. But, you know, travel will open up again next year. That's for sure. We will overcome this uh, pandemic. I think the pandemic for me has made me uh, be very grateful for everything that, that, we, that we have in our lives. And, you know, I realize that design is really important and we're busier than we've ever been. And I think what's lovely is people are still trying to create beautiful homes for people. And I think more so now, home is more important and hygiene is more important. And we're working with, you know, people very high, high up in, you know, when we create dressing rooms, we create these cupboards where, where you take your clothes off, they get sanitized you know we're creating areas when you come into people's homes where you can wash your hands and remove your shoes things we didn't think of before and so i think we're in the forefront of uh technology in that in that sense so i think we'll learn you have to learn from disaster and you have to create something positive so you got many projects going on at the same time and we know that actually uh, we would like to know from your first luxury residence here in china to now how you think the market luxury residence market has been evolved here oh massively i remember the very first project i had and i had a meeting in hong kong and I, I spoke, I didn't understand any Chinese and I didn't, ha it was just, it was a disaster. But actually the, the project ended up being fine. But now it's like, you know, 
you're way more advanced than, than many other countries in the world. And I suppose for me, it's, it's the sheer passion that comes out of Asia. Um, and for me, design is all about passion. And, and my love for the East, everyone knows, you, you know, I wrote my book so many years ago um, and it feeds me and I can't do without it. And so my love for working there is, is really important to me. Um, but I think, you only work well if two people are a good marriage together. And I think if, if a company is passionate about creating the best and you're passionate about creating the best, you can have this extraordinary partnership. Um, and we've proved it time and time again. And I think, you know, uh, it, over 25 years or more where I've been working in Asia, it, it, the advancement is, is massive. Now, what would be the design focus for the current project that you are working on? Would there be any trends that you would like to, uh, what would be the design focus for the current project? Well, I have so many um, and each one is different. And uh, I don't like trends because I don't think they're real. And as I said, the important thing is that we understand our client. And therefore, if you base your design on a trend, it's gone in a year. So anyone that designs trends, it's, it's a waste of time because it's not real. What we've created here that you're seeing on the screen is not a trend, it's reality. It's a lifestyle, it's an experience. And that's the difference between us and other designers. Yeah, we, we have a question from the audience that, that they really like your one part project in Taipei, but she's, he or she is curious about what is the black material on the wall you used in the lobby? Uh, well, we used a mixture. We used a plaster effect from Italy, and we also used marble. Plaster and marble. And in Chinese, uh, some Chinese owners, they don't like dark colors. So how would you convince them if you want to use it? Because that's the conversation we have. I don't have to use anything. We ask people what they want and that's why we have a questionnaire. So some people don't like white, some people like patterns, some people don't like black, some people don't like yellow, red, blue, green. Everyone has what they want and then we work with them. I will never make somebody do something they don't want to do. And in your design idea, what is the biggest difference between the design of a bedroom in commercial place, hotel and private residence? Well, as I said before, it's more about the fact that a private client will give you, uh, um, will tell you what they want. Whereas when you're doing a commercial bedroom, it has to be commercial and therefore it has to work for many people. So. The same detail will go into it, but it will uh, be a commercial space. In other words, a lot of people will be using the space, not just one or two people. You had so many projects going on at the same time, but you also have a lot of roles to play. You are the author of the books, a TV personality. So how you manage your time when all the projects are going at the same time? Well, because all the projects are not at the same time. Every project is slightly different. I also have a huge team of people um, who I've trained and who are unbelievable. Um, and uh, the books I do in my spare time. So I have a new book coming out beginning of next year. And yes, I do do some TV, but not as much as I used to. Um, but uh, during the pandemic, I was on television uh, a lot, talking to people, and I felt it was very important to help people. Um, I do a lot of charity work, but my passion is design. And every day I'm in my studio designing, and um, design doesn't take me very long because I love it. So it's, um, it's, it's easy for me. So what would be the content or what would be the focus of your new book ah it's a secret you'll have to wait and see <laughs> okay then uh, it said that you got a great team so during the time of managing company what is the biggest problem that you have ever met what's the differences between management and design 
Well, management is a funny word. For me, it's more about people and how they feel. And so we're very lucky that our team feel like a family. Uh, everyone has different characters. Uh, I think during this pandemic, I kept my family very close to me. I protected them, looked after them. They worked 100% normally from home. Uh, some of them continue to do that. One thing I know is that if you nurture the people that work for you, you get a great deal of support and uh, a great uh, product back. So I think managing is more about uh, conversation and communication. And I think that is key. And you are trying to make your design accessible to the masses through the, the online interior design masterclass you organized in the program you mentioned and also the books. So what kind of uh, guidance that you're trying to provide to the young designer or the new entrepreneur? Well, I try and help as much as I can as I'm running a massive business, but you know, I do a lot of talks on uh, social media to try and help people mentally, uh, but also with the masterclass is trying to tell them as much as I can, but also all my books are very much where people can learn from. So I've tried to share everything that I can. Um, so that people can, can learn from it. We have a question from the audience that uh, we have seen your projects in Beijing, Capital Land, in Shenzhen, Wuhan, and Chengdu. So to how you start your design in different cities? Uh, it makes no difference where it is. You know, normally I would be there and meet with the client. Um, but um, it's, we have now, what we do is have big Zoom calls with many people on, we, we start the process. And as I said earlier, we understand what the project is, what it is that people want from it. And we create a story, we create a, a relationship together. We create, we create what, what we want the end result to be. And then I go away and create with my team, the interiors and we take on board the chairman's uh, loves and, and dislikes. We, we, we like to work with the people at the top of every company because we feel that they know what they want and, and I want to speak to them and understand what they want. And that way we feel that we get exactly what our chairmen want and what the companies want. And we build a team relationship together. And uh, we're constantly on uh, WeChat and emails and conversations and zoom calls and and um it's, it's a very successful way of working do you think today's urban luxury what fact what factors have a luxury positioning what do you mean by that i got this from the audience and i'm trying to elaborate it can you ask me the question again do you think today's urban luxury, what factors have a luxury positioning? Well, I, I'm not quite sure what the question is, but uh, you know, urban life is really important. And I, I think that many years ago around the world, people would live with their families. So their grandparents and their grandchildren and everyone would be together. Today, people want to, to have more independent lives and urban life is really important. And I think that what developers are trying to do is create these, um, these buildings with these environments in that so younger people and, and uh, people can have their own life, if you like, away from the, the way in which they, for many, many years, people have lived together. So urban life is very important, but it still should be luxury. But it, there's a definition between what kind of luxury luxury many years ago was gold taps and you know uh showing your wealth through texture today luxury is about how you live in a space luxury is about the moment you walk into an apartment building what does it feel like uh it's not only the address it's the actual building itself and i think that's where we come into play is that we're creating these environments 
that people want to be a part of. They want it to be a part of their life. And I think that's very, very important. And sustainability. Um, moments where we have to work from home, we have to share the space with our families. So we have to be able to look at new ways to design, which is what we're doing today, so that people can work from home and share the space. And how do we store things? And how do children feel that they could be in a space while their parents are working and their mother is cooking? And, you know, we, we have to look at the world in a very different way. I'm fascinated by that, but I'm living and breathing it myself. So I think when you go through experience, as I said to you, good things and new things come out of it. I think if you sit in your life and just look with blinkers, you can't grow, you can't expand. So for me, it's about growth, it's about change, it's about finding better ways to live. It's not about trends, it's about reality, but at the same time, having the importance of total luxury, but defining what that luxury is in reality, um, and through beauty and through art and through texture and through um, sustainability and, um, and also longevity. Design has to have longevity. If you look at a Charles Eames chair or an Hermes Birkin bag, those will always be the ultimate luxury. How did they create those two things that no matter where you are, everyone knows that is the ultimate luxury. So to create buildings and interiors that stand the test of time, that was an extraordinary building and the design was, it was incredible and it still is today, that is perfection. So we do learn and think and cherish the life we have today from the big disaster we just experienced. Of course, and we're, we're, we're living proof. You know, we are living it. I am a grandmother. I am a mother. I am a, you know, a wife. I'm a, you know, everybody has loved ones. We're all living this life together, but we can continue to create beautiful things. We can continue to, uh, to create environments for people to live in, but we have to, we have to acknowledge what is going on in the world to incorporate that. And I think that's very important. So for us to be working with developers and creating these wonderful experiences for people um, going forward, I think it's really important, but they have to be sustainable and they have to last. They can't be okay this year and not okay next year. We have to be advanced. We have to be ahead of everyone. So uh, actually, uh, as a summary for our today's conversation, I still got two questions to ask you so the first one is that uh, how your style being involved in the past 44 years if you ref if you would like to use your project to define it so that's the first uh, question it's very it's very hard to do that because the thing is i'm often asked these questions but i live in the moment and my style just evolves i would say that you know, a lot of what I did maybe 20 odd years ago, I'm redeveloping, you know, the East meets West. Um, I don't know, it's, I don't really think about it. It's just, it's natural, it comes to me. It's about music, it's about experience, it's about what people want. Um, I think to find luxury is, is um, you know, less, maybe l l people need less. It's, it's more about the quality today, but I can't really pinpoint it because it's, uh, I don't think about it. Maybe next time I'll have a better answer because I'll have to think about it. <laughs> so the last question actually is from me as a host for today. You got your roles as mother, as grandmother, and also as a mentor to a lot of online uh, classes. So you have been said that the self-confidence to encourage you to develop your Kelly Hoffman style. So how do you cultivate this valuable character? How do I what? Cultivate. cultivate or train or uh, lead them. Do you know what? It's all about positive thought. It's, you know, you have to start your day feeling grateful and 
being grateful for what you have. I think that we all have to start our day with a positive mantra and we have to believe in ourselves and we have to, you know, more so now today than ever. It's, it's very difficult to try and be positive in a world today. You know, not all of us are fortunate as, as each other. So I think it's about understanding and, and I do want to try and put positive messages out for people and young people because the youth is our future and it, it breaks my heart that young people can't go to work and they can't integrate with people and they can't feel that the freedom that we had growing up. So I think um, it's, I don't know why I do it, but I, I like to talk to young people and try and give them the confidence and to show them that uh, everyone has the same insecurities, everyone has the same disbeliefs, everyone has the same days that are not great. But if we can all be positive and try and create something that works for us and I can help people just a little bit, then I'm happy.